Now, Tara and I happened to live in a wonderful part of Vancouver down in, in Kitts. And uh, we started getting letters from real estate agents soliciting our homes to, to sell them. And one of them I remember, it said, offshore money is pouring into Vancouver. Now is an excellent time to sell your house and move up or buy up. It really pissed me off. That was my home. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, if I was to put my house on the market, what would I list as the things that really made it a valuable piece of property? And I began to think about that. And one of the first things I, I thought about was my, my wife's mother and father live upstairs, and he's a fantastic gardener. Harry, stand up, please. This is, this is a man that keeps our house going. Thank you. And uh, he knew I liked raspberry. I love raspberries and asparagus. And guess what? There's a patch of asparagus and, and, and raspberries. And I remember one t time I'd been away in the United States for quite a few weeks. And when I came back home, first person to greet me was Harry at the door. And he had a little brown bag. And he said, this is the first asparagus that came off this year. And I saved it for you. And I put that down on my list as something that I value, those raspberries and, and, and the asparagus. My, uh, my father was a kitchen cabinet maker, and uh, when Tar and I got married, he built a kitchen cabinet for our first apartment. When we bought this house, we ripped out that cabinet and installed it in our kitchen. It didn't quite fit, but I really valued that because there was my father in that, in that kitchen, and I put that down as something I value. And my children, when our dog died, was buried in that under uh, the dogwood tree and then our cat and then God knows how many snakes and birds that the kids brought off the street. We had a little animal cemetery there and <laughs> I put that down on my list and I built a tree house in that dogwood tree and kids spent a lot of time playing in that tree house and I put that down as something valuable. We, my best friend Jim Murray came out from Toronto for a week and he helped me build a, the fence along the waterfront and he spent a long time carving a handle for the gate. And now every time I open that gate, I think of my friend Jim Murray, and that went down on my list. My mother died in 1974, 84, sorry, and we put her ashes on a clematis plant along the, the uh, waterfront there. And then when my niece Janice died, we put her ashes on that plant. And every year when the clematis blooms, I know that my mother and my niece are still there. And I put that down on my list. And I realized those are the things that make my house a home. They are to me priceless beyond words. And yet on the market, those things are worthless. And there's something fundamentally wrong to live in a system in which those important things don't register on what we've come to consider the most important part of our lives, which is the economy. And I think of First Nations people who have lived on their land for thousands and thousands of years, where rocks and every curve of the river and the forest are to them sacred. And you think there's got to be a way of recognizing the value inherent in those ways of looking at the world. The way we see the world shapes the way we treat it. And I think the crisis that we have today, the crisis in the biosphere where we live. People say, well, the planet's in trouble. The planet's not in trouble. The planet doesn't give a damn whether we're here or not. Whether we survive or disappear will make no difference to the planet. But the way we see this thin layer, the biosphere where we exist, is what determines the way we treat it. And that's the challenge now, is to see the world through different lenses. To see, to recognize that we are a part of this magnificent creation, this web of living things that sustains us and gives us the lives that we have. Thank you very much.